And I back in 2016, I found out about the Oculus Rift, actually. And I was always interested in VR and the stuff you could do. And I had been burned out off a lot of physical churches due to uh, miscommunication or just certain things I disagreed with. It wasn't until 2018, well, I went through, uh, 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 I quit games for a little bit to focus on job and other stuff, and then the VR never got away from me, and I was looking for churches in VR, and I found uh, VR Church, actually, all the way back then, uh, 2018, um, and I remember buying the Oculus Go, and I would put the headset on, and I remember enjoying the Oculus Go and stuff of that nature. And I actually went into alt space. Now, at the time, I was very hesitant about alt space and gaming. I still am to a degree. I was just hesitant of why I would want to go back after being brought out. Um, so I went on the alt space. And I found the VR church service somehow on Altspace. Uh, Altspace took me a minute to figure out on the Oculus Go. It took me a minute to figure out those controls and stuff. Um, I wouldn't say Altspace was the easiest to learn. Um, but I, what ended up happening is I found a VR church service, and I actually ended up at the European service with Bismic um, one time. And that was actually the first VR church service I went to. So I went to the 1 o'clock, I think. I don't know what made me go there to check it out. And I enjoyed it. And then it, um, I looked at the website and everything for a little bit. And then once I looked it up, I decided to uh, kind of check out the evening service. And so... I checked it out a couple of evening services um, before I ever volunteered. And then once I felt like I belonged in there, um, and the church was very welcoming in accepting everyone. Um, and I started to volunteer. And one of the, I'm actually, the volunteer positions that I actually really um, signed up for were uh, prayer and discord and prayer um, in the sermons. And back then, and you would pray right after service. And if people couldn't get in the service after an adult space, you couldn't get back in. So, um, but that's how I kind of got involved with uh, VR Church. And I've been off and on um, to some degree. But I've been very loyal. Uh, I didn't get really involved but before i forget i actually had somebody i was working at a popcorn uh shop uh near my area and i had one of the members of your church actually come down uh to visit me at the popcorn shop and uh, he's the one that kind of encouraged me to get involved uh with the VR church and that's how in 2019 is when i really kind of pushed forward um and then that's kind of how I got involved and still am involved uh, today. Um, and then uh, other opportunities came up where I was able to learn Unity during the pandemic and uh, a lot of other stuff. So that I think that's all my testimony. Mm, can I take this time, Zeke? Thank you. Thank you so yes. much for sharing with us. Oh, my gosh. I, like, so I just want to say, mm -hmm. um, on behalf of VRM Memo Church, uh, Zeke has been here and um, serving for so many years. Um, and we can't thank you enough for that. Like, seriously, in so many ways, you your, your, your fingerprints are just, like, all over everything. Um, but I, I'm really excited to announce that um, I can announce it, right? that for after service prayer coming up oh yeah and yeah. um on on teaching mm -hmm. sundays on teaching sundays um so that 
he doesn't want to do it every Sunday because, you know, uh, we don't want things to be a burden, right? So on teaching mm-hmm. Sundays every other week in the prayer hut over there, after the services, if you're in need of after service prayer, um, Zeke will be there to pray for you. And as always, um, we encourage um, volunteers. So if anybody else has your know, prayer as a, as a gifting um, we'd love for you to submit a ticket online. I know um, Zeke can definitely use the help, right? And then yes. um, we also just wanted to thank you for everyone who's been, you, even if you're not on, you know, official prayer team or what have you, but just those that are in there in Discord praying for, for people, reading, mm-hmm. making sure to, to check and see who's in need. And I know many of you are doing it, and we just really want to thank you for that sincerely um but on behalf of the whole community those that are in there in need of prayer or you know thank you for that and thank you zeke for all you've 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 done and all that you continue to do it's pretty awesome it's been so long i mean seriously Mm -hmm. long time thank you oh yeah well done thank you for sharing and that's a really cool announcement to hear. <laughs> wow, right? And making sure everyone knows after a service, go get prayer. Yes. <laughs> a new announcement to remember to infuse with the testimonies. Mm-hmm. Uh, exactly. Two at the same so time. If two anyone new exactly wants to uh, share their testimony like Zeke just did today of how God's worked in their life or how they have came to VRMO Church, feel free to reach out through the ticket system or even if that's too complicated, you can always direct message me and then I can throw you on the calendar. Uh, you know, and it probably won't be the next Sunday because I already have a backlog of uh, two weeks or two community Sundays. But... Um, yeah, we'll be able to slot you in and give you the time to prepare for whatever we want to say. All right. Yay. Any other announcements I'm forgetting? No. We're excited to hear what you're going to share today. Let's do that. <laughs> Let's do that. Okay, I'll <laughs> make it for myself. Go ahead and go outside to that tree area, and that's where the Proverbs uh, chapter 2, verse 1 starts. I should be megaphoned. To the right of the building when you exit. Alice is waving over here. <laughs> is uh, Zeke still megaphoned probably? So you'll have to go and unmegaphone yourself in that staff only area. Yeah. This yeah. often. Let me do that. I think we're all ready. Five, four, three, two, one. All right, well, <laughs> let's go ahead and start. I'm not quite an expert enough at Rec Room to be able to megaphone people, but so I'll just read the verses today. But maybe one day I'll start uh, calling on people. So Proverbs 2 begins with, My son. If you receive my words and treasure my commands within you so that you incline your ear to wisdom and apply your heart to understanding. Yes, if you cry out for discernment and lift up your voice for understanding. And I'm just going to take a quick pause here. It's going to end with like, uh, then you'll understand the knowledge of the God and the fear of the Lord. But when it says, my son if you receive my words. What's that talking about? The the Proverbs is set in the context of a father teaching a son. Just as much as a father in heaven is teaching you through his scriptures and an example how fathers should be teaching their children in today's context, you know. Uh, I think that's really cool. Uh, So what are these commands that are being given? These, uh, my words? They're the proverbs that are right here. And what's a proverb? A, it's a parable, a comparison, and an aphorism, sentences of ethical wisdom or ethical maxims. Uh, you know, it's all about short sentences from long experience. 
The emphasis is that they're easy to remember. They condense a lot of wisdom into a small space, which I think is really cool. It makes me think of a zip file compression where God decided to take a bunch of paragraphs worth of wisdom and be able to share them in sentence form, in like short, easy to remember sentences. There are many allusions in the Bible to chewing the cud when it comes to reading and understanding scripture. And so to truly digest these scriptures, you need to really reread them. And you won't get it just by reading the chapter once. You need to really digest it by rereading it and rereading it. One interesting thing that a uh, reading plan that I've heard of is some people will just pick the day on the calendar and use that to pick the chapter of Proverbs to read for that day. That way, if you miss a chapter one day or another day, you don't feel this pressure that you're falling behind in your reading plan. You just pick, oh, today is, you know, the 28th. I'll go ahead and read Proverbs 28 and stuff like that. So it's really cool, really cool ways to chew the cud. When he's referring to my son, you know, it's written 15 times in Proverbs. It's, you know, written throughout chapters 1 through 7, and they're used a lot even once by the chapter that's written, quote-unquote, for Lamel's mother, uh, chapter 31. So this term could be referring to students that Solomon was teaching, but there's a good chance that it was referring to his, Solomon's sons and the ones he was teaching. But who's the Solomon guy who wrote Proverbs? Real quick, I'll give you the Bible's character description of him, which is located in 1 Kings chapter 4, verses 29 through 34, where it says, And God gave Solomon wisdom and exceedingly great understanding, uh, and largeness of heart like the sand on the seashore. And thus Solomon's wisdom excelled the wisdom of all the men of the East and all the wisdom of Egypt. For he was wiser than all men, than Ethan the Ezraite and Heman uh, Chalcol and Darda, the sons of Mahal. And his fame was in all the surrounding nations. He spoke 3,000 proverbs, and his songs were 1,005. Also, he spoke of trees from the cedar tree of Lebanon, even to the hyssop that springs out of the wall. He spoke also of animals, of birds, of creeping things, and of fish. And men of all nations from all the kings of the earth who had heard of his wisdom came to hear the wisdom of Solomon. So Solomon was... You know, like, isn't that crazy? Uh, you know... There, he, apparently, he ha gave 3,000 proverbs. Not all of them are located in the book of Proverbs we have today. But, you know, the, the book of Proverbs was compiled by a, a lot of good people, and so we got a lot of good of Proverbs here. Let us continue on to the next section. So if you seek her as silver, her being wisdom, and search her, uh, and search for her as for hidden treasures, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom, from his mouth come knowledge and understanding. Woo! Powerful. Um, so if you seek her as silver and search for her as hidden treasures was something that I guess commenters don't usually pause on, but I'm going to pause on this to talk about how money is a great motivator. Matthew 6.1, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So if God is wisdom, then this passage parallels Matthew 6.24, which is talked about next. No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon, is what's in King James Version, but money and other translations, because mammon was a form of currency, food kind of thing that the Jews would use. Um, 1 Timothy 6.10, 1 
For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil, for which some have strayed from the faith in their greediness and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Why I'm mentioning that is because when you look at this, God's trying to encourage you to pursue wisdom, to pursue the wisdom that comes from his mouth so much more than silver, so much more than treasure, which will prevent you from falling into the trap of the love of money becoming the root of all kinds of evil. Well, it'll prevent you from straying from the faith. It'll prevent you from piercing yourself with many sorrows. So I really, really encourage you, just make it so that God is a much higher priority than money ever is, silver or gold. And just to clarify, silver isn't the, pre the only precious metal that wisdom is better than. Wisdom is also better than, uh, you know, gold, as Proverbs 16.16 16 says. And to get understanding is to be chosen rather than gold. Wait, hold on. Oh, no, it's the Job passage. Hold on. <laughs> I apologize. I've messed up my notes. Proverbs 16, 16 says, And to get understanding is to be chosen rather than silver. And then Job talks about, in Job 28, 15, it says that wisdom cannot be purchased for gold, nor can silver be weighed for its price. So it's also more valuable than gold. Sorry, I messed up that a little bit. Going on to verse 5, where we've got this, uh, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. Wisdom, this is a good place to talk about wisdom. Wisdom in the scripture means the ability to use knowledge properly. Wisdom occurs in Proverbs alone 37 times, and wisdom also means Jesus Christ for the believer today. If you look at 1 Corinthians 1 verse 30, but of him you are in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God, and righteousness, and sanctification, and redemption. Colossians 2, uh, verse 2 through 3. That their hearts may be encouraged, being knit together in love, and attaining to all riches of, of the full assurance of understanding, to the knowledge of the mystery of God, both of the Father and of Christ, and whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. So Jesus Christ has all wisdom wisdom and knowledge in him. And so that's really interesting when you're now reading Proverbs and you're talking, it talks about seeking wisdom from the mouth of God. Guess what? Jesus is God and everything he taught is also from the mouth of God. And so therefore Jesus is basically the embodiment of wisdom. So whenever you seek wisdom, seek Jesus. Whenever you seek Jesus, seek wisdom. It's really simple. And it really makes us, when you read through Proverbs, you have a whole new perspective that this is encourage you to seek Jesus in the end. Another thing to talk about is, so if the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, you know, uh, and here it talks about how in verse 5, the, the understanding the fear of the Lord, you'll find the knowledge of God, right? You'll find the knowledge of God. That has a lot of big, heavy implications that I'm <laughs> I'm going to walk you through real quick because we've got plenty of time. Uh, okay, cool, cool. Thank you. All right. So we'll go ahead and walk through this really cool train of thought I had when I was teaching Mark 14 way back when. Um, what does the Bible say we should desire most? And it says wisdom in Proverbs 3, verse 13 through 18. Happy is the man who finds wisdom and the man who gains understanding, for her proceeds are better than the profits of silver and her gain than fine gold. She is more precious than rubies, and all the things you may desire cannot compare with her. Length of days is in her right hand, and her left hand riches and honor. Her ways are ways of pleasantness, and all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to those who take hold of her, and happy are all who retain her. So then, and that makes a lot of sense, which when you put it in the context that wisdom is synonymous with Jesus, because Jesus is the embodiment of wisdom, where we already talked about in 1 Corinthians 1, verse 30, and Colossians chapter 2, verses 2 through 3. But even in Proverbs 8, 
it hints at Jesus being wisdom incarnate by saying wisdom was there at creation like Jesus was. Proverbs 8 verses 35 through 36 says, For whoever finds me finds life and obtains favor from the Lord. But he who sins against me wrongs his own soul. All those who hate me love death. So that, which parallels accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior, leading to eternal life. But rejecting him means eternal death in the New Testament, when you don't accept his death and resurrection on the cross. So how does the Bible say we should get wisdom if that's the most important thing? You know? Uh, it would make sense that we should research Jesus in context because Jesus embodies wisdom. But you'll find that there's many other ways that are listed in Proverbs. Uh, scripture, prayer, advice, and the fear of God. James or Proverbs 2, 6, For the Lord gives wisdom, from his mouth comes knowledge and understanding, which is right here. James 1, 5, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God who gives generously to all without reproach, and it will be given to him. So that's an example of prayer. Proverbs 19, 20, uh, listen to advice and accept its instruction that you may gain, gain wisdom in the future. And that's advice. You can learn from the advice of others. Proverbs 1, 7, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. F uh, fool despise wisdom and instruction. And so that's, once again, the fear of the Lord that leads to this beginning of knowledge and wisdom and instruction. Psalms 111, verse 10, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All those who practice it have a good understanding. His praises endures from ever, forever. And that's an example, once again, of the fear of the Lord is how we can get, attain wisdom. But i got to ask you this question. What does the fear of God look like? Are we supposed to be terroring? Are we supposed to be running away, waiting for God to smite us with the thunder, you know, and lightning or something? No. That's not what that's all at all about. How, you know, normally I hear it taught the Hebrew word is more of an awe or a healthy respect or reverence for a given person, like a father. Like, the, kind of similar to the reverence you would give to a father. But to my surprise, the Bible actually says in Proverbs 8, verse 13, the fear of the Lord is hatred of evil. Pride and arrogance and the way of evil and perverted speech I hate. I appreciate Proverbs... Yeah, oh, sorry. I appreciate Proverbs clarifies evil for typically when man does what is right in our own eyes. We get what is good versus evil mixed up all the time. Job even makes the connection to how God's the one who decides what good and evil and that wisdom is hatred of evil in Job 28, 28. He and he said to man, Behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to turn away from evil is understanding. So I'm going to go ahead and loop, loop back, right back to Proverbs 2, verses 4 and 5. If you seek her as silver and search for her as for hidden treasure, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. You know, Proverbs 15.33, the fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom, and before honor is humility. So we've got a bunch of passages that point toward the fear of God being the hatred of evil, seeking wisdom, and hearing the instruction of wisdom, as you can see here. So while you read the scriptures, I encourage you to keep an eye out for what God declares as evil. That way you can hate it, and growing in your fear of God, growing in your, growing in your wisdom which is great because that's the greatest thing to desire in the Bible, and which makes a lot of context in the context that Jesus is the embodiment of wisdom. Sorry for that long discussion, but I just think that's a really cool train of thought um, when I found out about that. Anyways, so I'll go ahead and move on to the next section, I think, a little bit. Yeah, there's a lot to cover, and we have 15 more minutes, so I'll keep going. He stores up sound wisdom for the upright. 
uh, he is a shield to those who walk uprightly. He guards the paths of justice and preserves the way of the saints. Then you will understand righteousness and justice, like equity in every good path. So it sounds like to me that if you grow in uprightness, a.k.a. staying in the sins and growing in integrity, then gar God will guard you and give you wisdom and which in turn teaches you how to be righteous and just. It's this cycle of growing in righteousness. It's wonderful. If you're with God, the Lord, you have made it in every respect, And is another way to put it. If not, there is no chance. You don't have God to protect you, you know, and to guard you. Proverbs will continue to nail this point in great detail as we continue going through chapters. And this is... You know, the Proverbs as a whole is a book, is God's book on how to live your life. It focuses living on an aggressive, dynamic lifestyle, dealing with attitudes and conduct. Since they don't didn't have the printis, printing press, uh, since they didn't have the printing press way back when, one of the ways to instruct children was to orally tell them memorable reminders. Reminders not just about what chores in the house are to be done, but the do's and don'ts of life itself. So we see a list of memorable you know, phrases, remind, <laughs> uh, uh, helpful reminders created by Solomon here. But yeah, we'll go ahead and continue. On. Whoops. <laughs> I uh, accidentally duplicated verse 7 twice. That chunk. Verse 10 through 11 and 12. Well, let's continue here. When wisdom enters your heart and knowledge is pleasant to your soul, discretion will preserve you. Your understanding will keep you to deliver you from the way of evil, from the man who speaks perverse things. So first thing that God created was wisdom, actually. Uh, you know, you'll find that in Proverbs 8, and it's, I'm going to go a little bit in detail probably pretty soon on that. Tr the traditional definition of what wisdom is, is it's the ability to use knowledge in the right way. Biblically, though, there is a wisdom of this world, talk about in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 1 through 8, and James 3, chapter 3, verses 13 through 18, if you want to look into that further. Divine wisdom is always from above, and Jesus Christ, as we've already talked about, is the wisdom of God. Uh, as talked about in Proverbs 8, verses 22 through 31, and, for, and we've already talked about 1 Corinthians 1, uh, verses 24 and verse 30, and Colossians chapter 2, verse 3, or 2 through 3, like I usually pull from. Wisdom, it occurs, the word itself occurs 45 times in the book of Proverbs. Makes sense because it's all talking about wisdom. You know, it's all about being knowledgeable, experienced, efficient in different areas of expertise. And it includes things like just functional skills, mo being moral, being an upright living person, which stems from a right relationship with the Lord. I'll, I'll just plant this thought. It's not in my notes. But if you think about it, we grow up and we learn the most by seeing how our parents live, uh, by having them instruct us, by correcting us when we make mistakes. And the, I like to think in the same way that in a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, where you pray for Jesus to reveal himself to you, where you read the scripture, preferably daily, and you ask those questions, whether that's asking God directly through prayer or asking at the QA sessions that we have after VRMO Church to ask like me or other people, or uh, asking questions people in other contacts on Discord and stuff. That's where you'll start really learning the most and the fightest, fastest because Jesus is a real living person who continues to live to this day that is omnipresent and hears our prayers and interacts with us, you know? And I think that when you ask 
your questions of God and about that your genuine struggles in the Bible, that he over time will put cir- circumstances and situations where you'll get to overhear the answer or something will click in your brain or you'll read another scripture that explains it out. Anyways, going back to my notes, <laughs> uh, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. We've already discussed, um, you know, this makes the Hebrew concept of wisdom unique when we talk about wisdom being the embodiment or Jesus being the embodiment of wisdom, being a person, all that. To be wise in biblical sense must be begin with a proper relationship with God. I just explained wisdom means so much more than we really think about on a day-to-day basis. If we want to live wisely, we must begin with a commitment to Jesus Christ because the two of them are so intertwined. Because Jesus was basically the mouthpiece of God. And uh, wisdom is described as eternal. This is something that will, as you continue to learn wisdom, wisdom will continue in heaven, in the new earth. You know, the creator of Wisdom is described as the creator of all things, as we already talked about in Proverbs 8, 27 through 29. And, uh, invite, uh, requested an invite from you. And wisdom is the beloved of God, talked about in Proverbs 8, uh, verses 30 and 31, which makes sense because Jesus is also the beloved of God. Which is, the parallels are insane. I just can't get over that because I'm learning about this as I'm studying. To yield your life to Christ and obey him is true wisdom. As John 1 verses 1 through 2 talk about. Colossians chapter 1 verses 15 through 19 talk about. We just don't have the time to go through all this. So, yeah. Another thing to mention, that if... When it talks about in verse 12, to deliver you from the way of evil, from the man who speaks perverse things, if we hate the things God calls evil, uh, then, you know, the things that God calls evil, then it will become easy for us to discern with discretion what things are evil and to avoid them. And so it's, it's really cool. Continuing on to verse 13 through 15. From those who leave the paths of rightness to walk in the ways of darkness, who rejoice in doing evil and delight in the perversity of the wicked, whose ways are crooked and who are devious in their paths. And ignore my typo of DS at the end when I was trying to move while typing (laughs) using the WSD keys. So I'm going to go ahead since this is pretty straightforward to me and you can reread it and think about it, take a quick tangent to talk about the structure of, pro- of these individual proverbs. Many cultures rhyme using meter, tempo, or similar last syllables. But Hebrew proverbs, the original rang- language that the book of Proverbs was written in, is rhymes in the pairing of ideas. I think that it's really cool because this rhyming of ideas lends itself to being translated to other cultures well and still being rememberable. It's a great example of where God planned ahead that this Bible that we have would not just be for the Israelites or the Jews that were in the Old Testament time period, but for the people of all languages in the New Testament time period after Jesus Christ came. So the three main types that you're going to see uh, of this kind of parallelism of ideas is synonymous parallelism, uh, antithetic parallelism, and synthetic parallelism. So the synonymous parallelism is where the second part or clause restates what is given in the first clause. An example of that would be judgments are prepared for scorners, and stripes for the back of fools, Proverbs 19.29. expresses the same thought in a different way. Sometimes every unit in one line is matched in the next line. This is called complete synonymous parallelism. Other times only some of the units in one line are matched in the second line, and this is called incomplete synonymous parallelism, but that only matters if you're being a theology student and you're trying to answer test questions, you know. Um, Antithetic 
is sometimes referred to contrast parallelism. A truth, which is stated in the first clause, is made, made stronger in the second clause by contrast with an opposite truth. The light, so an example of that, the light of the righteous rejoiceth, but the lamp of the wicked shall be put out. Proverbs 13, 9. You can see that the second statement is stating the same truth, but from the opposite point of view, by way of contrast. So it's it's pretty cool. Um, there's so many noises. Synthetic parallelism, if I can talk. Synthetic parallelism, the second clause develops the thought of the first. So an example of that would be, the terror of the king is as the roaring of a lion, he that provoketh him to anger sinneth against his own life. Proverbs 20, verse 2. In synthetic parallelism, the second line similarly continues the thought of the first line. And sometimes the second line gives a result of the first line. And other times the second line describes something in the first line. Sometimes one line gives a preference over what is referred to in the other. Like, this is better than that. Um, so... They are not exact carbon copies. You're still learning new information in the second clause. Is the infamous is what I see as the difference between synthetic parallelism and synonymous parallelism. Anyways, that's a really cool detour. Let's continue on to verses 16 through, if I can, aim 16, 17, 18. To deliver you from the immoral, immoral woman, from the seductress who flatters with her words, who forsakes the companion of her youth and forgets the covenant of her God, for her house leads down to death and her paths to the dead. So we've got three more minutes, so I'm going to be flying over this. But visualize for a second that Solomon is instructing his son, young sons. He is putting them on guard against prostitutes, against women who would have sex with those outside of marriage, which the Bible ends up calling adultery. It's ironic that Solomon, who was the wisest per man of his day, started off so well, but ended up in apostasy or turning away from following God because he had women draw him away from his earlier commitments. If I remember correctly, I think he had 700 wives. Uh, you know, and they were worshiping different idols uh, from different countries and regions and stuff. And so because of that, he ended up falling away. And so I, that would make a lot of sense if, you know, Solomon, who started falling by the wayside due to all of these wives and all of these circumstances, that he would be putting his sons on guard against that. Um so let's continue on. And the last segment is I over think here. You can. I think you can. Verses 19 through 22. None who go to her return, nor do they regain the paths of life. Or I'll, I'll give a few seconds. None who go to her return, nor do they regain the paths of life. So you may walk in the way of goodness and keep in the paths of righteousness for the upright will dwell in the land and the blameless will remain in it but the wicked will be cut off from the earth and the unfaithful will be uprooted from it and I ignore the aw dw when i was trying to move away from the screen <laughs> this is why i catch it all right uh, uh so the goal of avoiding evil it is to be righteous for the righteous can dwell safely, but the wicked typically do not have a long life. That's just the way of things. And do you truly believe that what it's saying here? <laughs> he chatters bloopers coming soon. I, I like that comment. Do you believe that, you know, that there's, that really the upright will dwell in the land? that the blameless will remain in it, that you will be able to stay in your houses, that you will be able to be preserved by God, um, whatever, whatever the circumstances are. You know, that's a question we all need to ask ourselves because honestly, I think there are times where I have to tell myself, 
I think sometimes that most of the times people are provided for, that there are exceptions. You know, I think of the book of Job and stuff like that. But really, in the end, God provided for Job. He gave a double portion of children and and possessions and land and all of that, even though for a time that was taken away from him. And so ultimately, God is a God of justice. And for those who do not repent of their sins or evil deeds against God, they will be punished at the end times. Uh, what 22, verse 20 talks about. We are so lucky that Jesus paid the full price for all of sin on the earth, all our evil deeds against God, by his death, by Jesus' death on the cross, and resurrecting three days later. So all we need to do is accept his free gift of salvation. I'm just going to pause it. If you want to do that today, just say, I want to start following Jesus today to someone who likes to pray, like Zeke, or like Alina, or like me, or I could even see Mr. P or Aaron jumping at the chance to be able to pray with you about that. It's so easy. It's so wonderful. Just, It's a wonderful journey to have a personal relationship with God. Anyways, thank you so much for coming, and let's close this in prayer and then a few announcements after prayer. Dear God, thank you so much that this was a success, that these scriptures were still up here, that we were able to get to this space, that there were very few technical difficulties, that people stuck around, <laughs> that your word is so true, that you've given Jesus on the cross to die on your sins, and that we can rest in the knowledge that when we seek you and pursue you, wisdom and Jesus and all of that, that we know that we can dwell in the land and that we'll be able to remain in it as we continue to walk with you and growing in righteousness and growing in being blameless. We ask you that you would give us the strength, the willpower, the motivation, the f proper fear of the Lord, uh, the, the proper respect of you, the proper under. Uh, hatred of evil uh, that you declare as evil, not what we consider evil, so that we may be able to enjoy life in, to the fullest with you. And for those who have never gotten to experience a personal relationship with you, God, we pray that you would reveal yourself to them here and that they would be able to spend eternal life with you and with all of us. Thank you so much for what you're doing in all our, all our hearts. In your powerful, precious name, Jesus Christ, God the Father, and Holy Spirit, amen. Great. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, I think um, Alice has some announcement if she's still around. And if she's not, I'll just read what she messaged me. Uh, I don't see her. So Loopers are... after teaching, huh, apparently we are going to retcon. So I don't know all that entails, but for those who are regular visitor, you know, regular users of retcon, we'll be having a booth on a stage in retcon. So get excited about that. Feel free to offer if you are in rec room a lot and you like VRMO Church. Feel free to offer to volunteer and be at the booth for different times. Secondarily, if you want to share your testimony like Zeke, feel free to message and ticket, and feel free to uh, always ask Zeke for prayer on the community or on teaching Sundays. I think that's it for announcements, unless there's anything else. So, uh, Horizons feel free. Church, uh, Horizons mm -hmm. Church starts right now over in Living Waters Bible Church. Anyone interested? Yeah. That's where I'll be. Horizons. Living Water Bible Church. Come join us. And that's another cool place if you want to experience more of the scriptures today. And if you want to hang out, uh, I'll be hanging out probably by those trees over there to answer any questions or prayer with people. And uh, just hang out, socialize, feel free to pray with people, and go play and hang out in Rec Room. And for the, the few people on Twitch, thank you so much for watching this uh, this wonderful teaching of Proverbs 2. And I 
pray that Avengers. God would continue to bless all of you. Anything, uh, Z? When is Retcon for people who might be watching on Twitch and stuff? Or they haven't said I do not know when Retcon is. Does anyone here know when Retcon is? I think it's in October. October 5th through 8th. We've got an, we've got an October here. We've got an October. Any other answers? <laughs> <laughs> It's like a Alexa, cellar. when's Recon? Okay. Recon twenty twenty two. Do a quick Google search. <laughs> well, we end this October fifth through eighth. And we got a second person saying that. Okay. So that's gonna be next week. Okay. Mm -hmm. I like Alien Yeah, Cheddars, you can find it under your watch. If you go to your watch notifications official, it has it right there. RSVP to Retcon. Retcon is back this year on October 5th to 8th. And uh, mm -hmm. you can click on that for more details. Okay. Perfect. Thank you, Aaron, for finding that much faster than I Thank could you. because I was just finding applications for Retcon that were due by a different date. It's online, so great. If so, make sure that if you want to volunteer, that you're free those days, uh, especially for those on Twitch or watching the YouTube later. So thank you so much, and uh, I'll be hanging by the trees. Hey, so I just wanted to say one more thing. A first of all, thank you, absolutely okay, go for it. love your teachings. But I wanted to um, let people know that you know Chatters uh, has gone so deep into this so wonderfully. I love particularly your teachings on really what is it to to, to fear the Lord. Um, and the other place I absolutely loved is when you were talking about giving people really practical ways that they can get to know Jesus more and in turn increasing in their wisdom and, and such. Um, and so those practical ways, of course, prayer and reading the scriptures, um, but also just talking with each other, right? So engaging when we have these community Sundays and participating and asking questions and getting into discord and participating in there and answering and asking and having these discussions is incredible and I love it and lastly what I wanted to say is if you're like me who can never remember you know I, I know this and that and oh you know scripture I don't know it all of course but but I can never remember where anything is some people are really good at quoting uh, this is from blah 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 this is not me and I know I'm not alone and not you know having this type of knowledge that is is retainable and so I wanted to suggest if you wanted to dig in even deeper than Cheddar's has already brought you to check out the um, stream um, which you find on YouTube because you had listed quite a few different resources um, that people who wanted to dig in deeper could do but I assumed that well I wouldn't remember those and so I wanted to just you know let you know to get in there check out the video yeah. Zoom to where you want, and you can get that information again through the video. And that is all. Exactly. So thank you very much. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. I second everything. You can always watch the YouTube video later because we archive them usually within three days of the Twitch. And uh, if you want to have a personal relationship with Jesus, like I said, get some prayer with someone and uh you know reading scripture is a great place i would recommend the gospel book of john just because that covers a lot of the basics of the teachings of jesus and then but also later on in your journey you can go into a deep dive and there's a lot more depth to it when you parallel a lot of the teachings with the festivals that the israelites would have and then lastly you know just ask questions you know, and have a good time fellowshipping, fellowshipping with people here and both, and in the Discord. <laughs> Thank you so much. Have fun socializing.